potatoes. Hey guys, let me turn this down. What? What's hidden? Okay. No, I don't want to share this. Facebook, stop doing things. Um, right. friends. Oh, yeah. Hey. Hey, friends. Okay. All right. Now, here we go. Go live. How y'all doing? Say hi in the comments. Who's that? I feel like I recognize that photo, but remind me. Flip the script. All right. Okay. All right. So let me turn up the brightness and hold on one second, guys, and put on do not disturb. All right. Hello, 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 everybody. Uh, we're getting started in three minutes. Happy Tuesday. Um, happy Tuesday. Um, ooh, do, 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 do. Hey, hey, hey. What's up? Hey, hello. Say hi. Uh, we're getting started in two minutes. Please be sure to share this out to your friends at 8.05. Um, Instagram, what's going on with y'all? You're usually quite chatty. Uh, so now we have some really cool stories. Uh, if you use ride share services, uh, there is a story for you. If you are a Michael Jackson fan... There's a story for you. And also, what is this one? Uh, we have an interesting story about Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we are getting started in just a, ooh, excuse me, a couple of minutes. Um, be sure, is everybody on vacation? Oh, you know what? It's around Christmas time. You guys are like doing vacations and stuff with your families. Okay. I get it. I get it. <laughs> We're getting started in one minute. And then some people pop in after the intro session because they don't want to hear my spiel every single episode. But that's okay. You know, every show has credits. You don't watch the credits. <laughs> um. All right. Oh, dun, dun, dun. Hey, hey. Mm, mm. Hmm. Mm, mm. So we're getting started in just a few seconds. Where are y'all? Say hi in the comments so I can say hi to you. Where is everybody? Y'all so quiet. All right. Okay. Well, it's time to start, y'all. Whether or not you're here, this party's getting started. All right. Let me hit the record button and we'll be on our way. Uh, don't mind me. Yes, I'm a little quiet today. I'm a little tired. Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Tuesday. 
<laughs> Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to NPL Legal Dish. Hey, I want to say Margaret. Yes. Hey, Margaret. Welcome to NPL Legal Dish. This is my Monday through Thursday live broadcast where I teach business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. Uh, if you're wondering who I am, I'm Natalie Pierre-Lewis. I'm the host of the show and I'm the owner and operator of NPL Consulting LLC, a business formation firm. What that means is I help people like yourself get your business paperwork together. So things like... Um, making sure you have your articles of incorporation with the state, uh, getting EIN numbers and DUNS numbers, making sure you have appropriate contracts so you don't get burned by clients and uh, business partners, brand brand protection strategies so people don't steal your business ideas, um, and, uh, and hiring policies so you don't get sued for discrimination. I help you do all of these foundational things so your business can grow with confidence. If you're wondering why I'm qualified to help you do all of these things, I'm very happy that you asked. I'm a licensed attorney. I have been one for 15 years and counting. I have started multiple businesses for myself and others, both online and offline. I've had many careers in the realms of entrepreneurship, the law, education, hospitality, and administrative support. And most important, I'm very passionate about making business and legal education as accessible to everyone as possible. Not everybody has the time, the money, or the desire to go to business school or to law school, but a lot of you have amazing business ideas. And if you're going to be successful in business, there are just some things that you need to know. There's no way around it. All right. So, um, so if you are, you know, thinking about starting a business, uh, in the startup phase of your business, or even if you've been in business for a while, but you realize that you need a little bit more structure, uh, I'm the person that you want to talk to. How do you get in contact with me? You go to linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm, linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm, linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm. There you're going to be able to book a free 15 minute consultation. If you are a first time client, you will also be able to download the free biz launch cheat sheet that will help you choose and launch your dream business in seven days or less at linktree forward slash npl consulting firm you can also subscribe to the youtube channel and the podcast where you can catch up on all the back episodes of this show if you can't make us if you can't make it live um and also that's where you can access a lot of my video trainings on different aspects of business formation. So, you know, I have one teaching you how to get an EIN number, how to get a DUNS number, how to do an operating agreement. And last but not least, Linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm is where you can get these snazzy NPL legal dish shirts. Hold on Facebook. I don't think y'all can see y'all can't really see. All right. These snazzy shirts with the emblem on the side. You can get those at Linktree forward slash NPL Consulting Firm. We only have six more left in stock, so get yours today, okay? Uh, but that is enough about my business side. Let's talk about the show, all right? For those of you who might not know, here is how the show works. Uh, I pull stories from the news, stories that you guys send me, stories from blog sites, anywhere I can find something interesting, uh, and I uh, pull, the one, pull the stories that have uh, la, la, business lessons that we can learn and we talk about them, all right? So this is a conversation. I am going to ask you to participate. Margaret, it seems like it's just me and you tonight, girl. So, you know, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm really gonna be leaning on you to, to, to keep this going with me, all right? Because I feed off the energy. And as people come in, you know, we'll have a good time. But we've got some fun stories tonight. I can't wait to get to them. Uh, you know, make sure that you invite your friends, help have them join in on the fun, all right? So, without... Further ado, let's get started. Uh, so our first story of the evening. Um, Margaret, do you use um it's um it's a vinyl, Margaret. It's a vinyl. So it's like an iron-on thing, I something like that. It's not embroidery. Um yes. So uh Okay, first story of the evening. Margaret, do you use either Uber or Lyft? Do you use any ride share service or have you, maybe you don't use it now due to, you know, the pandemic and stuff and we're not supposed to be doing that. But, you know, when the world was, I guess, quote unquote normal, did you ever use Uber or Lyft? If you did, give me a car emoji, okay? And while you do that, uh, I posted a poll in my stories today asking you guys, which rideshare app do you prefer, Lyft or Uber? Um, most of you, uh, actually, it was pretty neck and neck between you guys. You, you, um, you guys like both of them pretty much equally. You've never used a rideshare service, Margaret? 
Margaret, where, what state are you in, if you don't mind my asking? If you don't want to answer that, don't feel obligated. Um, anyway, uh, but yeah, we all know rideshare services. Uber and Lyft, they seem to be, you know, the big dogs in the in the rideshare industry right now, right? Um, and, you know, of course, people are always going to try and capitalize when a company is growing. Um, you live in Michigan? Okay. All right. Cool. Okay. Um, well, if you are a Lyft user or, you know, maybe you have Lyft stock. Hey, I am Stacy Joy. How you doing, girl? Um, I am Stacy Joy. Do you use either Uber or Lyft? Do you use any rideshare services? If you do, please give me a car emoji in the comments. So I'm just going to catch you up real quick because we were literally starting our first story. Um, yeah, we, uh, we are talking about Lyft this evening. Okay. So we know, we know that Lyft is, uh, you know, you don't, you don't, we're, oh, you're in New York. How do you not, uh. You don't use Uber or Lyft? You never use those? Okay. Um, all right. So Lyft has, you know, of course they have Ly the, the name Lyft trademarked, right? For, you know, rideshare services, da, 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 you drive, okay, cool. Um, for for, for uh, rideshare services and things like that. So Lyft has done the work of protecting their name, right? Well, there is a company, hey, Nessie Time, there is a company that has recently just tried to trademark a name that Lyft, the rideshare company, has some issues with. There is a company trying to trademark the name Flip Lyft. But Lyft is spelled L-Y-F-T, like the rideshare service. Now, this company does not have anything to do with Lyft. This company makes phone stands, and they, they make a specific phone stand uh, called the Flip Lyft. It is made in the USA. It does not contain any magnets, um, you know, and you can use the phone stand to have your phone up either vertically or horizontally. So it's made for you to watch your phone in whatever direction you want to, um, to watch it. And Lyft is very concerned about Flip Lyft's uh, trademark application, so they have opposed it. Now, Flip Lyft, they, they have tried to, they're trying to trademark the name, or they were trying to trademark the name, in the um, realm of devices for hands-free use of mobile phones, uh, of mobile phones, and stands adaptable for mobile phones. So Flip Lift was trying to trademark the name Flip Lift specifically for phone, ex uh, you know, a phone accessory. Meanwhile, Lyft, the the rideshare company, they're like, look, we we are we are in the you know transportation industry when we have our drivers they have to have stands so that they can put our phones lyft is concerned that some people might think that these hand free hands free devices are a product of the lyft company which they are not on top of the fact that lyft has its own dashboard um dashboard accessories so lyft was opposing flip lifts application right now before we move on to the second part of the story do you think lyft the rideshare company had a reasonable expect a reasonable fear of confusion or do you think they were doing too much i already got one from margaret margaret said oh no too close will cause confusion right so as I was doing my internet snooping today, I went to go look at Flip Lift, the company's website. And ladies and gentlemen, they're not even waiting for a lawsuit to occur. The company that is trying, uh, oh, I am Stacy Joy said, no, that's too confusing the name with the ride company. Right. Well, this company that was trying to trademark Flip Lift, they have already changed the name. They have, cha they have um, changed the spelling from L Y F T to L I F T. So it is the flip lift. It's still called the flip lift, but it is spelled the regular way. And if you go to their website, you'll see that it says flip lift TM in the upper right hand corner because they don't have a registered trademark yet. They are in the process of trademarking it, right? So um, flip lift, 
they don't want no smoke with Lyft, the company. So they, they were like, you know what, let's just change it back to something regular. But all of you seem to be on the same page with me that for you to put the word Lyft in your, in your um, product's name, when your product is used with cars, and we know that Lyft is a ride share companies, they deal with cars, there is, a, there is a very high likelihood of there being confusion. So this was exactly a correct um, move by Lyft by, um, to oppose the application and an even better move by Flip Lyft, the company, because they don't want no smoke. They save themselves a lot of money and heartache by just changing one letter, okay? So um, Margaret Massey said that was smart of them. Right, very smart of them. So, you know, good luck to Lyft and to Flip Lyft. Um, I might have to get me a flip lift just because it lets you put the phone horizontally and, um, vertically. Cause those phone stands, the ones that are the little rings that go on the back, it's like, it, you have to be very strategic about where you place it. Cause it doesn't work both ways. Um, but you know, whatever. Okay. That story's over. Now I want to get to the story that I was really excited about today. Okay, guys, did anybody here watching, did anybody here watch the HBO documentary, Leaving Neverland? If you watched the documentary, Leaving Neverland, um, just say yes. If you watched the documentary, Leaving Neverland. Um, it was a documentary uh, uh, about Michael Jackson. If you watch Leaving Neverland, let me know in the comments. And if you are a Michael Jackson fan, uh, thank you, 76 Grimcrest, you said no. If you are a Michael Jackson fan, give me a glove emoji. If you are a Michael Jackson fan, give me a glove emoji. Every single person here should be giving me a glove emoji because Michael Jackson has influenced all of your favorite artists. Give me a glove emoji if you are a Michael Jackson fan, okay? All right. So, excuse me, now that I'm off my soapbox, okay? Um, so, uh, if you didn't know, Michael Jackson recently, or his estate, thank you, 76 Grim K for the glove. Uh, Michael Jackson's estate recently won a $100 million lawsuit. You don't like Michael Jackson, Margaret? Or you or you didn't see Leaving Neverland? Oh, you didn't, okay. Okay, I see what you did. You didn't see Leaving Neverland, but you like Michael Jackson. Okay, Um so Michael Jackson's estate recently won a hundred million dollar judgment against HBO because of the documentary Leaving Neverland. If you don't know what the subject of Leaving Neverland is, um, it is, it is, uh, the account of two, um, young, uh, two, they're, they're adults now, but these gentlemen who say that, you know, as, as younger boys, they were at the Neverland Ranch and, you know, Michael Jackson um, I, uh, abused them sexually. This is what they were saying in the documentary. And it was just kind of, you know, a whole thing on that. I did not watch it. You know, look, we know Michael was troubled, but it's like we have rehashed this over and over and over. I don't see the need to to listen to, um, to, to you know, hear those stories again. Um, it, but, you know. I'm still listening to Michael Jackson. Uh, but the, so, so HBO aired this documentary, Leaving Neverland, right? Uh, also, that is not a slight to anybody who may have experienced trauma as a child. I'm just saying that uh, this particular documentary I was suspect about, okay? Um, so HBO did the documentary, Leaving Neverland. But what they forgot was that 27 years ago, uh, they... Uh, signed a contract with Michael Jackson uh, during his, uh, when he was on his dangerous tour. Now, if you were watching Michael back then, which was uh, the year 1992, um, HBO, you know, they filmed a documentary about Michael's performance of the dangerous tour in Bucharest. And when they signed this deal, to uh, air the dangerous tour in Bucharest for Michael Jackson, there was a non-disparagement clause 
in the contract, meaning there was a clause in the contract that said, HBO, if we're going into this deal, you can never say anything bad about Michael, his people, his work, nothing that has to do with Michael. You are not allowed to say anything negative when it comes to Michael Jackson, okay? Um, and when this documentary came out, the estate was like, excuse me, what happened to our 1992 agreement? Um, they're saying that this documentary negatively impacts Michael Jackson's family and the document is, and the documentary is to them, they say it's based on false accusations and that the people making the false accusations are being financially incentivized to lie. So they're basically saying the, the, the two men who uh, were the subjects of the documentary, they, they were paid to say those things and none of these things are true and they've tainted Michael's, um, Michael's legacy. And on top of that, you signed something saying that you weren't going to talk bad about us in the public. That's essentially what HBO signed 27 years ago. And that was an, uh, um, a, a contract in perpetuity because we know that these networks like HBO, they will re-air things, right? So they need a, a contract in perpetuity. So once Michael Jackson's estate was like, okay, y'all put out this documentary, they went, they dusted off the contract copy, they circled the non-disparagement clause, and they said, run us our money. So the court um, uh, ruled in favor of Michael Jackson's estate, and HBO now has to pay Michael Jackson's estate $100 million dollars as a punishment for breaching the non-disparagement clause. Ladies and gentlemen, and those in between and beyond, this is exactly why you need contracts in place. Look at how Michael is being protected from beyond the grave because he has contracts. That one clause that was signed 27 years ago is getting Michael's estate. Not even, Michael ain't even here. His estate, which means this money is going to go to his children and his family members, they're getting a hundred million dollars because you could not keep your mouth closed. Nessie Time said, yeah, he bad and cut yes, right? Don't mess with Michael Jackson. Michael was a very smart man. He knew what he was doing. Do not mess with Michael Jackson. Uh, Margaret Massey said, good for the estate. Right. Um, but what, what do you, but I have a question. What do you think about HBO? Do you think that they made, do, do you think that they forgot they had this contract with Michael? Do you think that nobody, maybe they thought nobody would care because Michael's gone? Or do you think that uh, maybe, or, or do you think that maybe they hoped that nobody would remember the contract? So if you think that they forgot about their contract with Michael, give me a one. If you were, if you think that they were hoping that, you know, people uh, would forget the contract, give me a two. And if you think that, uh, they, they just figured Michael was dead. So nobody, so nobody would care. Give me a three. Um, I am Stacey Joy said lawsuit. MJ lives on. Wow. 27 years ago. Absolutely. 27 years. And they, they are still bound by that piece of paper. Paper is powerful. That is why I say in my contracts ebook, put it on paper. If it doesn't happen, if any of you watch the Cobra Kai series, that's on Netflix, there is a scene where, uh, uh, one of the, what the, the main character he was running a dojo and um, he was renting it from somebody, but they only had a verbal agreement and the guy changed his mind because, you know, they were on opposite sides, whatever, whatever. And the, the, the dojo master, he was like, but I thought we had a, we had an agreement. And the guy was like, well, that's what happens with them verbal contracts. You know, you could, you can, uh, you know, you can never be too certain. That's why you need to put your contracts in paper. All right. Nessie Time said hands could have turned over several times over 27 years. Uh, what, I'm not sure what you what you mean by that, Nessie. Can you clarify that statement, please? Margaret Massey said, I think they thought um, no one would care or thought it was forgotten about. Three. Okay. Uh, 76 Green Cray said probably different lawyers back at that time. Um, okay. All right. Nessie Time, I think I just understood what you, what you were saying. Um I am Stacey Joyce and somebody made a mistake at HBO and is now on unemployment. 
Girl, that's the same thing I said. I said somebody got fired in the legal department because how did you not see this coming? Um, but yeah, Michael's estate has just won, you know, a cool 100 million because they had their paperwork in order and another party, you know, thought they could get over. All right. Or at least forgot. They forgot. But Michael's estate, don't forget. All right. Do you understand that people are going to be eating for generations off Michael's money? They are keeping that thing, you know, intact. Um, all right. Before we move on to our final story of the evening, I want to remind you that you are watching NPL Legal Dish. This is my Monday through Thursday live broadcast where I teach business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. If you are in the startup phase of your business and you need some legal guidance, uh, call me. Get in contact with me. Go to Linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm. You know, set yourself up a consultation. Uh, please be aware I'm not doing full coaching sessions. The one hour coaching sessions, those are off the table till January, but I am still doing the uh, discovery calls and uh, talk to me Tuesdays, okay? So um, so uh, those are still available. But yeah, come talk, talk to me. Come, let's see what we can do, all right? Let's, let's get that business idea out of your head and onto the ground. All right, moving. Uh, and you can uh, contact me at linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm. Okay, that is the link in my bio on Instagram and Facebook and all over the place. All right, moving on to our final story of the evening. Has anybody here heard of the Lincoln Project? If you have heard of the Lincoln Project, please give me an L in the comments. Uh, if you don't, if you haven't heard of them, um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. I didn't know about them till today, although I had heard the name. Um, the Lincoln Project is a political group that, uh, was airing ads, uh, opposing 45's re-election. So this was, oh, you've heard of the Margaret Massey? Okay, cool. This, this group, they were like, look, we do not want Trump back in office. So we are going to, you know, uh, put some commercials on the TV and wherever we can to tell people not to vote for him. So that was their purpose, you know, and obviously they, they seem to have been successful. Thank you, God. Um, but now the Lincoln Project, you know, they want to make this thing official. They want to make their political group, you know, an official thing. So they have filed a trademark application for the phrase, the Lincoln Project. They want to trademark it in the area of political fundraising services, okay? So they're like, you know, we did so well with this uh, campaign, we want to do it for some others. So let's make this a thing. Let's trademark our name, the Lincoln Project. Here is the problem. There is a gentleman by the name of Christopher Small. He um, provides educational and entertainment services regarding Abraham Lincoln, including portrayals. So if you hire Christopher Small, he'll come dressed as Abraham Lincoln and he'll teach you about him or, you know, he'll do presentations and things right th like that. OK, and he has a trademark on the phrase uh, the Lincoln Project for Educational and Entertainment Services. OK, um, he has filed a notice of opposition at um, to the USPTO because he said, look, you know, I understand that we're not necessarily in the same in the same um, in the same industries, but I'm getting calls from people about the name. They think that my company is involved with this political group and some people are being really nasty to me. I don't want my business being confused with this political group. I do educational and entertainment services. So he is opposing the trademark application for the Lincoln Project in the realm of political fundraising, okay? So I want to know from you guys, do you think that Christopher Small is doing too much or is he defending his name? Remember, the Lincoln Project, the, the one that opposes Trump, they are trying to trademark it in the realm of political fundraising. Fundraising. Christopher Small does educational and entertainment based um, services uh, in regards to Abraham Lincoln. He, he does, you know, role, role plays of Abraham Lincoln. But apparently people are mistaking his business, his business name to be affiliated with this political group. So do you think Christopher Small has a credible fear of confusion? Do you think that this that, that this trademark should be opposed? What do you think about that? Mm, 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 mm. 
What do you guys think about that? Ooh, ooh, ooh. How much time we got left? Okay, we got we got a good amount of time left. I personally, I think that while um, Christopher and the, and this political group, while their areas of interest are not necessarily the same, they do kind of cross over. Um, Seventy Six Grim K said, "Yes, there is room." Margaret Massey said, "He's defending his name. He should oppose." Right, there is crossover. Abraham Lincoln, he is a political figure, um, you know, and uh, it's. You know, so it's if people hear the Lincoln Project and what was it Nessie Times said I would do the same thing. I wouldn't want to be confused with them, right? So Abraham Lincoln, he's a political figure as well as uh, you know a historical figure that can that people should be, uh, you know are educated and entertained by. So he so while their exact businesses don't intersect. The um the subject matter of the name does intersect, right? Uh, I am Stacy Joy said yes. If it's causing a problem for his business, he should oppose. Absolutely. If you're getting threats from you know potential customers who think that your uh, you are involved with this political organization that may not align with their political beliefs, that could cause an adverse effect on your business. So. We don't, I don't know if Christopher Small will necessarily win, but he is definitely well within his rights to exercise his right to oppose because he can show that there is credible confusion. There is confusion out there. People are calling his business being like, oh, are you involved in this, you know, campaign to not reelect Trump? Um, Margaret Massey said they did some good commercials though. Did they? I, I honestly like, because I tried to keep my head out of the whole campaign. I knew who I was voting for. And I just, the, the news was just so depressing. I, I don't even remember if I saw one of their commercials. Margaret Massey said that Christopher Small should win. Um, I am Stacey Joy said, because the name is too close and threats is not cool, safety first. The name's not just close, Stacey Joy. The name is, is, is um, excuse me, is, is the same. It is the same. They are both called the Lincoln Project. Uh, and you're right. The threats are not cool because them, them uh, people associating the, link, uh, the Lincoln Project, the political group, with this entertainment service, he could legitimately be, you know, in danger. We've seen what, you know, the Proud Boys have done out on the streets. They're not really concerned with people's safety. So he could legitimately be... be he could legitimately be in, be in danger if someone you know is off their rocker and is like, oh, the Lincoln Project, pew pew. Um, so yes, Christopher Small is well within his rights to oppose this trademark, but we will have to see what the USPTO has um, has the the um, has to say about it. I'm um, Stacey Joey said, wow, so the same name, he did the right thing, right? Okay, all right. So those were the stories that I had for you tonight. We got about two minutes left. If you can get your, if you have any questions, if you can get them in within two minutes, I'll stay on and answer them. Um, while you do that, let me do my, cl my closeout rollout. I want to thank you guys for uh, watching with me this evening. I want to say hi to my parents. Hi to Joey, who's chilling on a beach in St. Martin leaving me in the cold. Um, thank you to my friends and family who watch. Thank you to all of you for participating. Thank you for your responses. Thank you for your interactions. Y'all are so dope. Um, make sure you get your t-shirts and mugs. Go to linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm for the links. Uh, I am Stacy Joy. Did you get your t-shirt yet? I mailed it out on Thursday. Um, and I sent you the tracking number. Okay. But yeah, but that's where I'm going to leave you guys tonight. Uh, I will be back here tomorrow with more stories for you. If you find anything interesting, you know, just hit me up in my inbox. You know, I love it when you send me stories. Um, take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Uh, what is it? Wash your hands. Wear your masks. Social distance. Okay. Um, so this is where I'm going to leave you tonight. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.